Thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner here on YouTube. And don't forget to leave us a like and a comment. And you can share with a friend if you enjoy it and subscribe so you're notified of new videos. Thanks and enjoy the show. This week on Today's Homeowner, we're making some kitchen changes you've asked about. You don't have to completely renovate the kitchen to make it more attractive and functional, and we'll show you how. The kitchen is one of the busiest rooms in the house, so improvements here are always popular with homeowners. People want the room to be more functional for their family and more attractive to their guests. So this week we're taking on several projects to do all of the above without a complete renovation. One of the most popular improvements that I hear homeowners wanting to do to their kitchen is to install a ceramic tile backsplash. And in a very small, modest kitchen like this, it's really not that big of a project. And I'm going to get a little help from the co-host of the Today's Homeowner radio show, Amy Hughes. Now, Amy is a very avid do-it-yourselfer, does a lot of projects around her own home, and she's wanting to install a ceramic tile backsplash in her kitchen. She's about to get some hands-on experience. So what kind of tile are you doing? The floor or what? Uh, no, backsplash. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, I think it's going to look really cool. Floor aisle, I think. Yeah. You got, you got some good choices here. Let me show you what you can look at. Okay. Thanks for your help. Yeah. You've got a lot of options here. I mean, glass, this is all glass. You've got travertine and glass mixed together. I love this, a little tumbled marble going on. Uh, looks like mother of pearl in here. I mean, you see what you've got to deal with. Yeah, lots of options. It's, it's creativity. So it's, it's just, you know, what do you want in that right. kitchen? I mean, what looks good to you? Oh, well, I really like the glass, okay. actually. The travertine is nice, but I think for this kitchen, um, I think a glass would work really well. While Amy and Alan are choosing the tile, I'm getting set up so that we can hit the ground running as soon as she returns. What do you think? Pretty nice, Pretty huh? Pretty cool. Yeah, I see a little bit of the blue that you have in there and the brown. I think it can't go wrong. I think it's going to look really good. Because the backsplash is mostly decorative, it isn't necessary to install cement backer board like you would in a shower or tub surround. Just be sure the drywall surface is smooth and clean so the tiles will lay flat and stick well. Now for the primary backsplash tool, the notch trowel. You like that? You know why that's that way? I have no idea. Well, um, a notch trial like that, and what you have to do is when you buy your thin set and your adhesive, you have to make sure that you read the label and that it matches exactly the type of notches you have on this. The reason for it, that is how you distribute the adhesive on the wall. So the size of the notches actually matters? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm surprised. Yeah, they definitely matter because if you get something too big or too small, it can really it can be a disaster. Applying the thin set isn't complicated. It's a little bit like frosting a cake. Yeah, yeah I, guess it, <laughs> I guess it is. But it's a little trickier on this tight vertical surface than it would be on a large flat floor. So let's put up some tile. And see, so you can put it in place, and then you can really play with it a little bit. Like right now, I'm, see I'm pushing it over, and then lining it up with the pencil marks just real carefully and then you just are pushing it in there and getting that bedded in there. I've got another little trick for you here. Okay. Are you concerned that I have lipstick? Hey! What do you think? Did is you go this, in my purse and steal my is lipstick? Is this a nice color? <laughs> Look at that. that would look really good yeah, on you. Yeah, not today. <laughs> the lipstick is actually for the outlets, not me or Amy. By pressing the sheet of tiles against it, we can mark the location for the cutout on the back side of the top. Here, we can actually cut these pieces like this, uh -huh. and then we can just piece in the little pieces. Okay. So, and just cutting this mesh, otherwise it would be, it's really tough to take these little pieces and cut them out. Impressive. We're on our way now. I almost feel like maybe I could do this by Maybe. Myself. Maybe. Oh boy, that is a vote of confidence. <laughs> However, it doesn't take long for Amy's confidence to increase because you simply repeat the same process over and over until you fill up the space with tile. Yep, keep going, keep going. Now at some point, you will likely have to cut the tiles themselves. And for this, you'll need a tile saw. But with these mosaics, 
The cuts are always small and easily managed. Okay, all right, don't touch the blade. Always turn it off. I guess now's not a good time to tell you how accident prone I am. Yeah, no, that wouldn't be good. <laughs> Eventually, Amy has this job mastered. Feels good, looks good. Might fall off the wall since good. I put it up. Yeah. Grab another one. Here, I'm your assistant. Excellent. Everything is right in the world. Look at there, look at that. If you've seen Simple Solutions over the years, you know I'm more of a drill bit and belt sander kind of guy. But here's a tip for putting a comforter into a duvet cover. Start by taking a duvet cover and turning it inside out. And lay it out on the bed with the open end down near the foot of the bed. Then take the comforter itself and just spread it out on top of the cover. And again, the cover is inside out. Start at the top of the top end and just roll it over all the way down. Okay, now here's the, here's the real trick. To get the comforter inside the duvet cover, simply open up the duvet cover and turn the whole thing inside out. Basically take the comforter and stuff it in side. Now, here's where the magic happens. Well, it might not be magical, but it's pretty cool. Now you just unroll it and the comforter is inside the cover. So there you go. You just snap it out. And there you go. So now you have to straighten it out a little bit, but you get the idea. The comforter is inside the duvet cover, ready to go. Why not? This week on today's homeowner, we're taking on projects for the kitchen to make it more functional and more attractive. Amy Hughes, one of the co-hosts on my radio show, has been helping me install a tile backsplash. While the backsplash is primarily decorative, it does serve a functional purpose as well. And you can't overlook function when you're improving a kitchen. Another very important functional aspect of any kitchen is to have proper ventilation. These things have been real popular over the last few years. They're called OTRs or over the range microwaves. But homeowners have discovered a few problems with this type of approach to ventilation and one's very obvious in that you're using these burners probably more than any other and the vent stops right here so that can be a problem. The most ideal situation is to move those odors and the heat all the way to the outside. Many times this type of unit will only allow recirculation. Air coming in here, going through a charcoal filter and back into the room. Again, not the most ideal situation. Well, Danny's right. There's a bit of a disadvantage to an over-the-range microwave, but I gotta say this, they're very convenient. And of course, for space saving, you can't beat it. But for the appliance over the range, you really need to consider a range hood. Uh, there's so many styles available to choose from and right away you can see they're much deeper. They're going to cover the entire surface. Uh, you can choose models that have the controls underneath, here on the face. I've seen some that are on top of the model. Of course, easy to clean filters. That's a must now. But what's really great about the new models, the lighting. You've got these lights that are either LEDs or quartz halogens. That's great. But before you make your choice based on style and features, there are two numbers you need to think about. Let me show you. I really like this model. It's very sleek, very contemporary looking. Uh, I did mention two numbers though. First of all, it's the Sones number. That's, that's the level of noise. You want this to be very quiet. I mean, when the fan's on, you don't want it to sound like you're at the airport. So the lower the Sones number, the quieter the motor. The second number has to do with your CFMs, how many cubic feet of air per minute that this will move out. You see, with kitchens, it's a little different. You want the air to exchange in your kitchen a minimum of 15 times per hour. So that number is important, but figuring out is a little complicated. First of all, you need to have the cubic feet of your kitchen. You, know, you need to know how many BTUs that your stove gives out. And then you need to know how many feet of duct work it takes to go from here to vent all that to the outside. And you're venting smoke odor, moisture, and heat. Obviously, ventilation is an important part of creating a healthy environment in your home. And so is paying attention to the water your family drinks. One way to do that is by installing a water filtration system right at the kitchen sink. There was a different type of faucet here before, and when they did the more streamlined type faucet, it left us a perfect hole for this to fit into. This one not only delivers better tasting water from a dedicated faucet, it also removes contaminants that can affect your health, like microbial cysts, lead, and some herbicides and pesticides. Plus, it's supposed to be easy to install. Once you assemble the faucet and mount it in the sink top, the work under the counter begins. Glad it's not me down there. <laughs> Thanks. 
There's a T connector that diverts water from the cold water supply line to the filter system. From there, another line will take it to the sink top faucet. The filter itself is a canister that simply twists into the mount with a quarter turn motion, so changing them is easy. Okay, I'm turning the cold water on, check it out. Works great up here. All right, looks good down here. What about the filter? What do they say as far as how long the filter lasts? Uh, it says six months on the box. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty. What do you think? Doesn't yeah. it look fairly good? I think it looks great. It fits in really well. I think it's great. Really good. Well, we have our tile up, so we'll wait till tomorrow morning to grout that. This is in good shape, but I have another idea after we grout that we can do for this little space right in here. What's that? There are so many innovative products out on the market now to make your kitchen more functional, but actually safer too, right Shay? That's right, um, Jody. Um, Moen actually has a new kitchen faucet that is motion sensed by three different ways. You have the wave sensor, the ready sensor, and this cool feature, the three spray pull down feature. It um, has the spray, you can pause it, and it's an aerated stream as well. See, that's neat because if you've got dirty hands from, say, outside working in your garden, you've got a hands full with your pot, or even if you've been working with raw meat, you certainly don't want to be touching your faucet because that's where germs can breed, and then you can infect someone down the road. But if you've got your little sensors here, you don't have to touch a thing, and the water comes on and you can wash your hands. I love it. Great feature in as well. Um, it already has the supply lines included with it. And a lot of people complain that the sprayer inside the neck of the faucet, you know, it dangles over time, but look how that just clicks right back into place. Thank you, Shay, so much. Thank you. Our look at Kitchen Upgrade started yesterday with a backsplash project. Amy, my co-host from the Today's Home on a Radio Show, had never done tile work before, so she was getting her chance to learn on the job. Once the tile was installed, we decided to add another decorative touch with a shelf above the sink. While waiting for the tile to dry, we cut a 1x6 to fit in the space between the cabinets. Then we ripped it down to about 5 inches wide and gave the front edge a cove detail with a router. Now, Amy was a big fan of power tools, but not so much the dust. <laughs> that dust is everywhere. <laughs> wow. I have an air, air gun I can... Um. <laughs> with a little matching stain and a coat of polyurethane, the shelf was ready to dry overnight along with the backsplash. Today, it's time to grout and install our new shelf. All right, we'll cover all of this up because the grouting process can be a little messy. I'm uh, proud of you for showing up another day here. <laughs> well, I'm proud that our tile hasn't fallen off the wall. Yeah, no, the, <laughs> this looks great. Uh, tell you what, if you can use this specialized tool <laughs> and you see how some of the thin set is oh, coming yeah, through here okay. and there, and uh, we want to be able to out. have a void there so that we can push the grout in. If you'll do that, I'm going to do a little more taping around here and get the grout ready. Those stray chunks of thinset will shine through the grout if we don't remove them. And the process of applying this stuff is even messier than the thinset. So the tape will save us lots of cleanup. All right, there's the color. Wow, oh, okay. okay. A little bit of an oatmeal thing going on? Yep. Hope you like it, because that's what we're using. <laughs> We're wetting it down with water first because we want the grout to fill the gaps but not stick to the surface. It inspired you yesterday, didn't it? You went Did. home last night and you I thought know. about... I was looking at my kitchen thinking, hmm, where would this look good in here? <laughs> you can do that this weekend. As barbaric as it may look, you squeeze this in on a 45 degree angle. Don't look at the surface of it. You just want to make sure you see how you're Mm -hmm. With the rubber float like this, you're able to push it into all of those. This is your only chance to do it. You can't come back and do it. Now, what's the importance of the 45 degree angle? Well, it just allows you to push it in there without catching any of the pieces. And then now you see why we taped it off. I think you missed a spot right there. <laughs> mm -hmm, there you go. <laughs> I'm not finished. Once again, Amy seems to be a natural with the grout float. I should have taken a break a lot sooner. Eventually, the grout has all been applied and it's time to begin the tedious task of sponging it all off. So what you want to do, this is kind of more of a, kind of a circular pattern. And you'll, act, you'll feel like you're not getting anything done. See that? Mm -hmm. That's all they do. Oh, that looks even, like I thought it looked good before, but the grout no. really makes it stand out. Yeah, it kind out. of stands out and boy, what a perfect color too. I like that. But eventually, after plenty of sponging and rinsing, and sponging and rinsing, it's almost done. 
Hey, our shelf looks pretty good, huh? Hey, that does look good. We have all of the polyurethane on it, so it's ready to hang. And, and I'll tell you what, if you're thinking of hanging something like this, it's really fairly easy because you have a little lip on most cabinets that hang down about like that. So we'll be able to drill some pilot holes, put a few screws in it, and that will take care of the hanging of the shelf. Also, a little bit later, we're going to show you how to get rid of little scratches and scars on your cabinets like this. Okay, All the right. other end there. Drilling these pilot holes will ensure that the screws we're using to fasten the shelves won't split the wood. Looks like we're ready for some mugs. Oh yeah, that thing's nice and sturdy. Hey, what are you doing? You snacking? Well, yeah, I, I like walnuts. Walnuts are pretty good. You, would you like one? Uh, no, thank you. Well, but I want to know. <laughs> this is going to solve our problem with the scratches. A walnut? Yeah. Really? Right. Well, first of all, Ordinarily, if you have a scratch like this and you have the stain like we had that I poured a little in a cup, take some sandpaper like this is 320 grit, mm -hmm. sand this down a little bit, then use a rag, dab it on there to kind of kind of cover up the stain. Then you're going to have to come back and put a little polyurethane over it. Or there's all kinds of like putty pencils. Oh, yeah, I've and seen little then pens. the little markers. Mm -hmm. These work pretty good. But watch this. Now, watch on this one right here. Simple walnut. Believe that? Look at That's it. That's impressive. Really? A walnut? Yeah. And then, you know, because it's oily, it'll stay in there huh. really well. You know, even on these darker edges like this. Look. Oh, that's incredible. <laughs> I don't understand. How does it, I mean, how does it work? It's a walnut. So, here's something you can be doing while I'm taking care of the other scratches. This is a, a really great shelf liner. Easy Liner from Duck Brand has a non-slip surface on the underside, so it doesn't require any adhesive to hold it in place once it's cut to fit. Spills and messes are caught by the liner before they stain the cabinets. And to make it even easier, you can take the liner out and toss it in a washing machine for a complete cleanup. While we wrap up the work here, check out this cleanup question. Beth Ann wants to know, what is the very best way to clean stainless steel? And that's a great question because there's so much stainless steel around our home these days, both inside and out. Now there's a lot of great stainless steel cleaners that are available, but you probably have some things at your house right now that you can use without buying any cleaner. Start out with some warm water and a nice clean cloth. It'll take care of most of the cleaning, but even better, use a microfiber cloth because it absorbs the water really well and prevents a lot of those water spots. But if you need a little extra punch in your cleaning solution, then add some dishwashing liquid is all you need to make that cleaning job a little easier. Fingerprints, big problem on the front of refrigerators or dishwashers. Glass cleaner is all you need to wipe all of those fingerprints out. You probably have some if you have a few of those children around your house. And if you want to put a little bit of a polish on the front of that refrigerator, believe it or not, you can use a little bit of olive oil or baby oil to really make it look nice. So Amy, are you absolutely amazed at the power of walnuts? <laughs> yes, I still think you're pulling my leg, but if I hadn't seen it for myself, I mean, that's amazing. I know, it's, it's great that they look so much better because anybody that has stained cabinets, they're going to have a few nicks here oh, yeah. and there. So that takes care of that. Okay, do you think you can go to your home now and install a backsplash in your kitchen? Yes. <laughs> I don't think I would have had the confidence, but just doing it once, I mean, it's amazing how easy it is. And, and what about the inexpensive aspect of it? You know, for only $175, all the materials, including the tools, to do this whole thing. Amazing. And here's a very inexpensive thing, too, the little decorative shelf. That turned out nice, but I added a little something to it, a little LED light that's battery-powered. I was able to tuck right under for just a little bit of accent like that. That's there. a nice touch. <laughs> <laughs> and I like these Easy Liner uh, shelf liners you found. Yeah. I I still think it's so cool that you can just pull it out and throw it in the washer when it gets a little dirty or just wipe it off and you're good to go. Boy, that makes so much sense. And another thing that makes a lot of sense is not buying all that bottled water and having that right at your fingertips. I like that a lot I like as well. that too. I am so inspired. Lots of cool <laughs> ideas. <laughs> hey, we hope we've inspired you as well. Amy, thanks a lot for being with us. I'm Danny Lifford. We'll see you next week right here on Today's Homeowner. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner. And don't forget to comment, like, and hit the bell icon so that we can notify you when new videos are posted. And don't go anywhere. Click around and continue the home improving fun.